it has become really common for groups in the modern era to be online entities for groups to meet either primarily or exclusively online. You may not ever be in the same room as somebody else from your group in a physical sense. So what I want to do with this video is just provide some tips for effective virtual groups, those that meet entirely or primarily online and, and make use of online technology. So uh, one of the first things I want to encourage you to do is to create a communication charter, a communication team charter, where you collaboratively create a document that normalizes group communication practices. This could be things as specific as when you receive an email from a group member, you will respond or at least acknowledge that email within 24 hours or whatever it is. Or, you know, in, in group communication, in group meetings, we're going to raise our hands or we're going to you know, make sure we're not blaming people for whatever, whatever it is you want to identify here that we can kind of establish these norms as much up front and establish these expectations, set these guidelines up front through that communication charter. So a few things that you might want to consider for your communication charter and, and having in place there. First of all, what technology is going to be used for particular tasks? Are you going to primarily communicate through email as a group or as, or are you going to use text or do you have, you know, Microsoft Teams or Slack or something else that you're going to use to communicate as a team? What's the primary form of communication? What technology is going to be used for collaborative documents? Are you using Google Docs or using um, something else like that? Um, so what technology is going to be used for specific tasks? So you can make sure you're all using kind of the same thing. What are the deadlines for updates and submissions? So what are the deadlines for, you know, we want an update from you know, every week on these projects, on this part of the project, or we need things submitted by, you know, Wednesday so that people can review them at the end of the week. And then we can talk about it for our meeting on Monday. So any, any kind of regular deadlines um, uh, need to be established up front. So people can really plan their work and, and plan around that and have things ready on time. I mentioned before, what are the expected response times? If somebody contacts you about a group issue, uh, a project issue, what is the expectation for when you'll get back to them and when should they be concerned that you haven't gotten back to them? Um, what are going to be the meeting venues and times? Are you going to use Zoom? Are you going to use Teams? Are you going to use some other technology that's, that's available to you? And when, when are you going to do this? Again, allowing people to schedule these things in their lives and work around them, get them on their calendar early. So you got to establish this as early as possible. Any kind of regular meetings and regular meeting times that you're going to be using as part of your team charter, your communication charter up front. This is a really important document. It just again, sets up those guidelines and allows you to have something later on that you can point to say, point to somebody and say, look, this is what we agreed upon. You haven't been doing this. Do we need to make an adjustment here? Or can you, do you think you can, um, um begin to meet some of these things. So anyway, I would strongly encourage you to consider even in the most basic sense, some sort of team charter, communication charter as you begin your work. Another thing to consider is accountability. Some things to keep in mind about accountability. First of all, in a group, the, one of the wonderful things is you can share leadership. Even if you have an assigned leader or somebody who's, you know, the de facto leader, you can still share leadership. People, group members can be leaders. That's the, the one of the benefits of having so many people in, you know, working together is that you can share that responsibility. You can all be a part of that and develop those skills and, and take on that responsibility. So you can share leadership. However, you're going to want to assign an accountability manager. So share that leadership, but assign an accountability manager, somebody who's keeping track of who's supposed to be doing what and can follow up with him about that. Somebody who's you know responsible for doing that can, can say, okay, this person's going to have this part done by this date. If they don't, we need to reach out to them. We need to see what's happening. So you need somebody who's tracking that and following those different things to make sure that these tasks, tasks are being completed. You should really have these these things, uh, commitments and timelines publicly trackable. So I encourage you to create an online spreadsheet or some way that you can track who's doing what, when's it going to be done by, um, and, and you know, what are they working on specifically? What's the time frame? What, you know, how does that affect everything else? So that you can publicly keep track of these things and know because what you're working on may be dependent on something else that somebody else is working on. So at the very least, it would be nice to know when you're going to have access to that, when it's expected to be completed and so forth. Um, but it also just helps people remain accountable to, for what this is what you said you would do. This is what we put down in this document. So uh, is this happening or is this not happening? And, and you can go from there then. So that personal accountability can be um, tracked as well. 
So accountability, incredibly important in a group uh, atmosphere to make sure everybody's getting done what they said they would get done and, and, and doing so in a timely manner and that we know what the plan is for those things. You also want to pick the right tech tool. We have so much technology available. It is amazing the kind of things you can do and how much that can benefit a group. You don't need it all though. And what you need to do is pick the right tech tool for what you're trying to do. And then there are a couple of guidelines to keep in mind as well with that. So once you pick that, first of all, identify and stick to that agreed upon channel. If you agreed to use Google Docs for these things and to share files through Google Docs or whatever it is, uh, then, then stick to that. Don't have one person say, well, I decided to house it out here. I'm using, you know, the Microsoft 365 platform instead. So I just want to keep it there and you can go there and find it. Keep everything together. Once you've identified as a group something that you're going to use, stick to it, right? Well, if you're going to use Zoom for meetings, don't have one person say, well, I prefer Microsoft Teams. So if you want to have a meeting with me, it's going to be on Teams. Come on, just identify a tool and stick with it um, to simplify things for everybody. Now, having said that, you can mix and match resources for the greatest impact. That doesn't mean you can't use other tools. You should, in fact, use other tools and mix and match these things um, f as, as needed to provide the greatest possible impact. And then go out and find those helpful apps. There are things that you can, you know, depending on what your group's working on, there are different things that can be helpful for you as a group. It may be the G Suite. They've got lots of things in this Google Suite that can be very, very helpful to you. And I use it a lot with the different, different components of it. And they're all kind of integrated. And that's nice. And, and the same thing is true for Microsoft 365. If you're a Microsoft person or whatever it is you want to use, find those apps that are helpful and find ways to utilize them. Things like Zoom can be amazing um, to, for meetings and, and synchronous type things. And they record meetings and they can be useful for training and all kinds of things. Uh, so Zoom can be very helpful. Doodle Poll is another one if you're trying to find a meeting time, for example, can be really helpful. So you can mix and match and find these helpful apps. And you don't have to make use of everything just because it's out there. But find the ones that are going to be helpful for your group and make use of them. My final tip for you is to communicate competently. And that may sound kind of obvious, but the truth is we don't do it that much. That's part of what we're doing here is trying to learn how to communicate more effectively in groups. But uh, a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to keep the channel in mind. There are different communication channels that we use to communicate. So for example, is this channel lean or is it rich? And where does it fall on that spectrum? Meaning, you know, real life conversation is really rich because we have access to all these different channels of communication. A text message is very lean because we have just the words to go by, maybe some emojis or whatever, but still, there's a lot of ambiguity there because we're limiting ourselves in terms of the number of channels. There's a lot of convenience to texting and it can be wonderful, but we need to keep in mind that it's lean. And uh, so when we say something, we have to think very hard about how that might be interpreted on the other end or, or whatnot. So, um, so is this a lean channel or a rich channel of communication and how does that impact what I'm trying to do? So keep the channel in mind, keep in mind, is this synchronous or asynchronous? Meaning is this happening in real time or not? So when we're in a zoom meeting, that's synchronous. So there are things we can, you know, ways we want to communicate there that are different than when we're communicating asynchronously through a text message or an email or something like that. So anyway, keep the channel in mind. Bear in mind that syntax matters. There's a difference between let's eat grandma and let's eat grandma. Right? There's a difference there. So keep in mind that syntax matters in the way that you are perceived as a professional. And, and so even when you're texting, you're emailing, you're whatever you're writing on, on instant messenger or whatever it is you're doing, Syntax matters, vocabulary matters, it, you know, it all goes to your credibility and it goes to the understandability of your statement, whether or not the other person can interpret it effectively and, and use that information the way that you intend. So syntax matters, vocabulary matters, keep all that in mind and use your best writing skills. Manage conflict wisely. Communicate competently by managing conflict wisely. It's okay to disagree in groups. It's okay to state your opinion. It's okay to have conflict even. That can be constructive, but we need to manage it wisely. Don't let things get personal. Don't let things get, you know, don't let huge teams and, and you know, big battles like that come out. Handle your conflict wisely. Work collaboratively. If you have to, work cooperatively, but, but manage that conflict wisely. And think interculturally. And that doesn't just mean people from different countries and, but, and, and different, you know, racial or ethnic backgrounds and things. It certainly applies there. And we want to think that way, but, you know, but just think that people think differently. People think differently. I, I work in a huge team from all across the country and, and, uh, and we think differently people from, you know, just because the way we, the environments were raised and where we live and things like that, it's all good. It brings those different perspectives in. That's one of the great advantages of working in a group. 
but we have to think interculturally. Not everybody thinks the same way we do, has the same opinions we do. We shouldn't make assumptions about that kind of thing. So we need to think interculturally and, and, and use those effective intercultural aspects of communication in our group. Odds are you're going to be in a virtual group at some point. And, and so we're going to have these experiences. We're going to have to work in these environments and they can be wonderful. There's a lot of productivity that can happen, a lot of advantages to working in virtual groups, but it has different aspects that need to be managed differently, even though, even from regular group experiences. So keep those in mind that virtual groups are unique and require a, a unique uh, touch from us, from all the group members in order to make that an effective experience. If you have questions about working in virtual teams or groups and uh, how to do that more effectively, please feel free to email me. I'd love to, to chat with you about that. Uh, in the meantime, I hope that this has been helpful and giving you, giving you some food for thought about how we can work most effectively in the you know, growing presence of virtual teams and virtual groups.